Hello, this is Tacoa Manning or Bonnie Manning at Elijah's Prophetic Cup. And I'm here with my friend and co-host, Crystal Perez. And we wanted to share today about seeds, weeds, gardening, and Crystal and her family have been doing a lot of gardening. And I, I can't wait for you to hear about what all the Holy One has been speaking to her about inner garden which reminds me of genesis and uh how he was walking with them in the garden and so i'm going to be reading from matthew 13 and then i'm going to just open this up and let crystal share all the wonderful downloads she's been receiving and i'm reading matthew 13 and I'm going to start with verse 24. And it says, Yeshua put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and slipped away. When the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. So the servants asked him, do you want us to go on and pull them up? No, he said, if you pull the weeds now, you might uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds, tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat into my barn. And I'm going to stop there. And so, Crystal, I hear you have grass now, a whole backyard full. Yes. Um, we, for a moment in time, we had mostly dirt back there. In the high desert, it's difficult to grow things. And uh, both my husband and I, we laid the seed, new soil, and a foundation over so the animals and erosion wouldn't take place and a few weeks later this lush greenery just came in flowing in like green waves um so you know after we planted the seeds with the grass we decided to make our garden a little bit bigger and as we were doing so um i got seed packets and i have a flower mixture of a variety of different like cottage garden and hummingbird and bee flowers. And I planted them and uh, they're starting to grow. And I there's some I can identify, but there's some I can't. And I'm like, well, what is this? And I'll go and Google, like, what is this? And I'm starting to realize that there are weeds among my seeds. Um, and I'm like, well, how did they get there? Um, I have no <laughs> idea. But I, as I'm in the garden and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking to Abba, I, it's almost as if he's telling me you know, when you disrupt the soil, sometimes things can come up. Um, and depending on what seed was laying dormant is what you will receive. And I thought, oh, wow. Um, like I said, there are some that I know are weeds. I can just tell. And then there are some that I'm like, what are you? And yet I'm told not to pull them yet. So I found that to be very interesting. Um, I think it's uh, when you can put your hands into the soil and you you start working the earth, it's you start to see creation in a different way. Um, there's so many things that have been like just every morning I wake up and I'm out there and it's just me and it's Abba and it's the ground and it's the vegetation and sometimes there's dew and sometimes I step on a weed <laughs> and I get poked. <laughs> and there's all these little moments of lessons and learnings that I feel he's instilling in me. Um, I'm starting to see, teach my children, um, just starting to see scripture come to life in a different sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's really neat too, because as you're, you know, you're picturing the soul and just turning it over and turning it over and getting the fertilizer and getting it prepared. And it, it sort of reminds me of, what's hidden in the darkness it does sprout it does come forth and it is rebuilt um and 
one, there was one particular time in my life that there was some weeds growing that were choking out uh, some beautiful flowers. And one day it had rained and rained. I mean, it just poured buckets. And I really felt like the father wanted me to go out then and pull these weeds up and they were so easy to pull up. Mm -hmm. If you've ever tried to pull up the weeds when the ground's hard and it's dry, it's you're, if they're big, these were big weeds, um, but they just slid right out after all the water, the, the, the Ruach had saturated that ground. And uh, that day there was some issues that were personal that he began to heal and, and take care of. So I know that we always talk about how things are happening in the natural, but then we've got to look, right? We've got to look at the spirit or the Ruach. So it is. Um, I know our, our modern times with agriculture and farming, we, <clears throat> we till the soil, we dig it up. And, but if, if we look at nature, when you go to a forest, things don't get dug up. It falls to the ground and it grows and there's layers on that. So it's kind of like we need to build the soil, right? You don't fix the plant, you fix the soil. Um, and I, I do think there's a lesson there for us as well. Like when we, when we go and we start messing with the soil, whether we're adding some type of amendment or we're digging, soil it like the ground will always find a way to cover itself whether it's flowers grass weeds um and that's a lesson i learned with our grass years prior to that we tried to grow grass and it wouldn't grow because we never put a cover over the seeds the birds came it couldn't grow on a slope the seed just got washed away it's not until I watched a documentary called uh, Back to Eden, where this man is discussing how the father told him how to, to garden. And uh, after watching that, it just, it hit me. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. Even the ground needs a cover. <laughs> yes, and Whoa. even the seventh year of rest, when all the fruit falls off the trees and we let it lay there and all those rich, nutrients and everything goes back into that soil when we keep the commandments written in the five books of Moses, right? Yes. And so it's really interesting. And I'm, I'm thinking about shifting gears here a little bit because it sort of goes with what you're talking about. But I was studying earlier today and last night about how Yeshua sends us out as sheep among wolves. And uh, nobody really likes to hear that. That's not for the faint of heart. I mean, you know, um, but as I was researching, a lot of different areas in Yellowstone and different places in Idaho where they tried to remove all of the wolf population because of everything that was happening with them as predators and their sheep farmers. Well, and different farmers. Well, what happened was just a horrible thing because when you remove the wolves from the ecosystem, they were taking out the big elk and the big caboose, like these animals that eventually eat everything down to nothing, destroy the soil, the plant life. And so the wolves were keeping that where it wasn't overpopulated in the land could stay with all the vegetation. And so when they remove them, anytime we try to remove something that the father has created for his purpose, mm -hmm. and I, I think that goes right with what you're trying to say. It does, it, it reminds me of the weeds and the flowers. <laughs> I didn't plant the weeds. Um, it was in the soil. Maybe it was Adonai. Maybe there's a lesson for me to see how to decipher more clearly, well, what's a weed and what's a flower? And, you know, some, like I said, it's sometimes it's easy to spot the weed because it's got these thistles and these thorns. And sometimes these weeds 
they flower and they're beautiful too, but they can be invasive. They can choke out other beauty, beautiful things growing. Um, there's a lot to ponder there, you know? We need the weeds, unfortunately. <laughs> they are a nuisance, but we do need them because they, sometimes if they're blocking the light, if the plant is strong enough, it'll go through and still get the sunshine. Yeah, and the weeds a lot of times are medicinal plants that have healing for our bodies. And yes. um, the names they're given are just, there's a lot of irony in that too, you know, witch hazel and all these different names of these different, you know, um, I have a ton of aloe vera and it's really good if you have a sunburn, um, bites, you know, stings, whatever. There's so much healing in aloe vera for the gut. It just has a lot of healing properties. But where our house is, there is also right next to it, a big thorn tree. And in order for me to get and pick my aloe vera, I have to be very careful that that thorn tree doesn't, you know, stab me. So it's like uh, the father was showing me how those were right next to one another. And so I also, I want to go back to Yeshua's words because he says he's sending us out as sheep among wolves and to be wise as serpents but harmless as doves and these two uh you know you've got a snake and a dove I mean the contrast there is just you know night and day really but also when we are warned in scripture that there are wolves in sheep clothing now, this is not a wolf who's, who's, it's very obvious they're a wolf. This one is acting as if it is something it's not, right. which is sort of like the darnel and the wheat. Because until, you know, they're both growing and they look just alike. Right. And until that wheat becomes mature and bows its head with its fruit, you can't tell the difference. And so. Very interesting. Yes. Huh. Yeah. It's like the weeds. I have some growing. I don't know if it's a floral or if it's a weed. And in time, I'll find out. <laughs> That's a, that too would be for my good because it's just another lesson to learn, to identify, right? Yes. <laughs> so we're going to hop off here and we'll be back and we're going to be talking about morning glories and how they can do a lot of things to your garden if you're not careful. And so we'll be back with part two of this gardening uh, weeds and seeds series and uh, we pray it's been a blessing to you guys bye shalom bye guys shalom <laughs>